Hi y'all, this tutorial is going to cover Opus 60 Number 2 by Fernando Sor. This is a really great early solo for beginning guitar players who are starting to get into that solo playing. I got this from guitarcurriculum.com. If you're a teacher, that is a really great website for you to get lots of guitar ensemble music and solo music that's appropriate for beginning to intermediate and even advanced guitar players. It does have a yearly subscription, but it's definitely worth it. So for Opus 60 number two, I'm gonna recommend that you use fixed position. So that's thumb on string three, index on string two, and middle on string one. And you should really only be playing this piece if you know your, your left hand fingerings for the first three strings. Um, but if you're ready with that stuff, then you're good to go on this piece. You could try alternation to get a little bit more speed on the eighth notes. However, if you're not really confident with alternation, if this is maybe the first or second time that you'd be trying it, I would stick with the fixed position. All right, let's talk about how to play the first four measures of this. So there are certain notes that are going to be accented and certain notes that should fall into the background just a little bit. And to me, when I hear it, I hear the second note of the piece, the fourth note, and the last note of the second measure being the main accented notes in the first two measures. And it's the same thing in the next two measures as well. That gives it a nice feel you know you don't want to play all the notes completely straight you want to really bring out the correct notes so all of that together would sound like this all right moving on so this is a piece where there are a, are a lot of measures that are going to be more difficult than some of the other measures. So rather than just playing through this whole piece over and over again, you really want to focus on the tough measures. And the basic rule of thumb is the more eighth notes it is, the harder it's probably going to be. So the big measures with lots of eighth notes would be measure eight, measure 15, measure 23, and measure 31. And on all of those measures, as you're practicing them, you want to practice that measure plus the first note of the next measure. So let's take, for instance, measure eight with C sharp. You would go all the way to the G of the next measure. That's really how the phrasing goes. So not many people get this right the first time. So what you want to do is break it into smaller parts. So let's just start with the eighth notes. Can you do DCB? Okay, one more time, DCB. Now just add A. DCBA. Again, DCBA. And then DCBAG. Again, DCBAG. And probably one more time, DCBAG. Then you can add that C sharp. C sharp, D, C, B, A, G. Now you have it. And if that wasn't enough practice, you can continue to break it down. You can start with the C sharp. Go C sharp, D. C sharp, D, C. Okay? Eventually, when you hit these hard parts from every angle, from the beginning, from the end, from the middle, they start to be really manageable and they start to feel easy. And that's our goal. We want even the hard parts to feel easy. Then when you're under pressure, it's not such a big deal. So for Opus 60 number two, really you want to make sure that you are constantly looking out for the phrasing, follow the dynamics that are written into the score. And for the most part, make sure you focus on the hard parts. It's so common that when I hear students play this, all the easier measures with quarter notes, half notes, they're all sounding really good. And then we get to eighth notes and those measures don't sound so good. So be prepared to spend 50% of the time that you work on this piece 
on just those eighth note measures. All right, thank you for listening to my tutorial for Opus 60 number two, and happy practicing.